it seems that more people are understanding that the system that they've been issued uh, and told to participate in, it, there's something very, very wrong with it. So maybe we will see, and I think we will for sure, see more people you know, circumventing the current system in any way they can, whether it's through Monero or some other avenue. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. Cake Wallet is trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Duman interviews Gregory Manorino, known as the Robin Hood of Wall Street, for his passion to inform his over 200,000 YouTube subscribers about the truth of the Federal Reserve. Gregory has been interested in Bitcoin for years for its potential to disrupt the central banks and is now discovering Monero. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Gregory, what's going on, man? <laughs> so much. I don't know where to start. Uh, I don't know. Where do you want to start? Where, where do you get all this energy from? That's a good place to start. Um, you like this all the time being, or only, on, only during the shows that you do? Probably because I'm a little bit insane. And I think that people that are a little uh, you know, off, they tend to have a lot of energy, I guess. I, I we don't I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, I like to stay enthusiastic, even in in any kind of an environment. Uh, but it's, it does wear on me from time to time. Uh, that's really the truth. You have your ups and your downs. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm mostly up. I like look. I try to stay as positive as I possibly can uh, all, all the time, and I I think you know. It's an important attitude to to stay positive about things, even if your life becomes overwhelmed, which that does happen to me from time to time, like today. Um, but overall, you know, look, it's it's all good, and and, and what all's well that ends well. So, with that said, I, I don't know uh, what else. Does the market affect you emotionally, or is it like you've you've learned to kind of be? detached from it emotionally no it doesn't it doesn't affect me the market the performance of the market i i try to stay ahead of it so i kind of am aware uh and at least if i'm not well yeah where is a good word of, of what's coming here or what to expect may come so when it does i don't get all bent out of shape about it um plus you know for me and i think people that follow my work know this already the way i structure my own i manage my own portfolio and the way i do that is i keep myself hedged so i can sleep at night now, there was a time not so long ago when it wasn't like this at all when i was a lot more reckless in the market i've adopted a new strategy um with the market here as i've i've gotten older and uh had to had to change up a little bit uh you know, initially for, for many, many, many years, I was really uh, glued to my my trading platform and jumping in and out of positions a lot. I don't do that anymore. Um, I, I, I've, I'm now a net seller of options in the market. Uh, I tend to own only large cap dividend paying stocks. I trade around these things. Uh, a very A very safe straightforward way with regard to equities. And at the same time, you know, I'm in a lot of different things as well. I'm a big cryptocurrency advocate. I think you probably know that. Um, I'm in precious metals as well. I like to trade energy. I've been doing that a lot lately, uh, investing in energy, stuff like that. Uh, you know, so I, I've definitely become more mellow as I've gotten 
older, I, I can't deal. The reason, the real reason for me for the switch from, let's say, what I was doing to what I am now is I really couldn't handle the maybe the emotional swings in a bankroll when you are, for example, buying options, um, calls and or puts, combinations of the, those kinds of things. You can get some pretty substantial swings in your bankroll, sometimes like staggering ones. And I just said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. Uh, I think it's a young man's game. I'm, I'm not a young man. So, uh, you know, it's a fun game to play, I think, for a while for people. And I did that for many years. But now, like I said, I've, I've kind of mellowed out as I've, I've gotten older. Yeah, I, I'll be honest, man. I don't know much about you. Somebody reached out to me in the Monero community, like, you got to get this guy on the show. And mm -hmm. um, since then, uh, I, I'll, I, I, I didn't unfortunately take the time to watch too many of your videos. And then today I was like, Oh, I got the interview and I went to check it out. I was like, Oh wow, this guy's got 200 K subscribers. Like I, I, I didn't really do my research and I watched one or two of your yeah. videos and I was like, I like this guy, man, this guy, this guy's great. Thank you. So <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I don't know a lot about you. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to be asking something, but I don't think, I mean, there might be a lot of people that, that watch my channel that don't know much about you. So I, th I think it's okay uh, that we have kind of this convo and they can learn more about you too. So you want to do a quick intro of yourself, let people know like who you are, what you do, sure. what, you're, what you're known for? Sure. Um, well, I'm, I'm a market guy. I'm a, I'm, and I don't just mean equities. Uh, I'm a kind of guy who's into the market, all aspects of it. I try to capitalize on what's going on, the insanity of the market. Uh, I try to stay ahead of the curve, realizing what's going on behind the scenes. I try to, what I do, what I've been doing for years is, Try to enlighten people as to how the market really works, all aspects of it, not what they believe it does, but what it really does and how to how to get themselves on the right side of the market. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that don't understand it. Most people I don't think understand at all what, what goes on in the financial world, what the drivers are of the market, how they can make it work for them. You know, people sit back and they they wonder um, for example, like why this happened or why does that happen? And I, what I try to do with my work, I, I've been out here since the Prince, well, right after the meltdown or while the meltdown was still going on in 2009, I guess I, I, I started out here about 13 years ago uh, where I started talking about these markets. And I, the only reason why I started doing it is because I was upset about the current state of affairs, how people were affected by the market crash, what really went on behind the scenes, the TAR program, why was it introduced? Uh, I watched my own portfolio dissolve at the time. I watched very close friends of mine get hurt people. I couldn't, I couldn't take it. So I said, you know, I got to start talking about this stuff. So that's what I did. Um, I literally just one day, uh, I said to my wife, I was like, you know, I'm angry and I want to start talking about the markets. I started out as a kid, okay, uh, pretty much uh, working at one of the biggest banks on Wall Street at the time, which was Bear Stearns. They went down during, well, they didn't really go down. They were bought out by J.P. Morgan. The, the, J.P. Morgan bought Bear for like, you know, pennies on the dollar. Uh, and, it, it, you know, part of the, the sacrificial lambs of Wall Street during the financial crisis with Lehman Brothers. I mean, you know, that's all that really was here. The financial system is more screwed up today than it was then by exponents. But that's that's a whole other story. But that's what got me started with this. I wanted to tell people what's happening, what I at least believed was going on. And people would, people would have just right off the bat, like, Greg, how do you know this stuff? Well, because I've been involved in it for a very long time. So you pick up things. And as I've gotten, you know, I, I, what's the word here, you know, out here for a long time and gained a little bit of, I guess, of uh, becoming somewhat infamous, uh, I, I learned a lot more. And I continue to learn. And I want, to, I want people to uh, experience the market for what it really is, try to capitalize on the market, realizing that, you know, we're marching to an, a grand finale here. The market's not real. The economy's not real. It's all propped up on oceans of debt. I've been telling people it's a, a house of cars built on an ocean of, of gasoline. 
uh, and it, it's going to go off at one particular time. Um, I'm not in the business here of, of pointing a finger at when that's going to happen. What I do is I ex explain to people, trade the market you have uh, and then invest for the future. And I think my strategy has been uh, working. I kind of run my blog like a massive hedge fund in many ways. I told people what they should be looking at. Am I right all the time? No. But anyone that knows my work will say that Greg is right the vast majority of the time. So that's really what I do. I And I do it. Why do I do this? Well, because I feel a responsibility, I think, to at least my audience, which is reasonably large. Um, I want to keep everyone on the right side of this. I want people to, again, take the twisted, perverted system. And that's what it is. And instead of being a victim of it, weaponize that. And so they can benefit from it themselves. That's really what I'm all about. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Has, has your view of the market changed a lot or the market and the economy in general? Obviously, you've learned a lot along the way. You started off as a young guy. Uh, you have Bear Stearns. I mean, how how has your your viewpoint changed from when you started to what you where you are now? Like, what have you learned? Like, what you know? Can can you uh, give us any insight into that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, look, I was a kid. Like I said, I I this was back in nineteen. I think it was eighty seven, uh, and I had seen the movie Wall Street, and I was like, wow. I was like, I want to be Gordon Gecko. He's a cool guy. He was a criminal, you know, obviously, but he was just a cool, the character was kind of cool. And um, I had just mentioned to my dad um, at the time, I was like, hey, you know, my dad had worked on Wall Street many, 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 many years, years ago. And so he had some friends. So he said, hey, Greg, you know, you want, you want to learn about this stuff? Well, maybe I can help you get a job. And that's how I got the job over at Bear. I had no idea what I was going to do. It's the most craziest thing in the world. I had this terrible, cheap suit. It was only one I owned at the time. And I put it on. I went over there and sat down with my this guy that my dad had hooked me up with. I mean, he sits me down uh, in, his, in his office. He says, okay, Greg, what do you want to do? And I was like, uh, oh, I don't know. What do you want me to do? I mean, I had no answer. I was, you know, I had no background zero about what uh, what any of this was about so but at least that kind of got my foot in the door um i got a job over there and the, the whole thing back then was very twisted um I, I, there was a, a lot of illegal things that were going on back then and i'm sure it's even worse today uh here i was at the time uh not licensed nothing and i'm sitting here uh, acting in many ways as a broker, okay, but under the real broker's license. I was working for a broker, but, you know, I was never really disclosed to people and, you know, whatever. So I kind of just went with the flow. And that's how that whole thing started. But that's how we started to get some insight into the, the system, how yeah. it works. Um, and then I got out of that whole thing for a while. And that's a whole other story. <laughs> And uh, I got into medicine for 20 years. I did that, got out of medicine, and me made, made a full uh, turnaround here and got back into uh, the market here. I did both for a, a really long time, and now this is all I do. But but that, that has, my perspective is just you know look the system is is sick, and I don't think people understand how sick it is. Um, it it's um, it's just ugly, and I think the you know it's. It creates, obviously, a massive wealth gap. And people that respect the market, no matter how sick and twisted it is, will make money in it. But you got to understand how it works. It's not just a matter of sitting down and, um, you know, buying the market. you got to really understand the drivers of it. What is making the market do what it does? And that is the actions of central bank around, banks around the world who are determined right now to be the lenders and buyers of last resort. Uh, own it all, become the governments of the world. This is this is not speculation. This is what's actually going on here. Uh, it's uh, it, it's an, it's completely insane right now. There's no price discovery mechanism behind the market anymore. PE ratios don't matter anymore. Uh, forward guidance doesn't matter anymore. What these companies do, for the most part, doesn't matter anymore. It's all easy money. 
And the easy money has been poured into this market since the Federal Reserve started artificially suppressing rates since the last meltdown, something that's not going to stop, despite the fact that they're talking about rate hikes, despite the fact they're talking about that they tapered back in November, they tapered nothing. Anyone want to, and I could prove that to anyone who's listening, just go to the Federal Reserve's website. It's hidden in plain sight. Go look at their balance sheet over the last six months, a year, and look at November, and you will see their balance sheet has not swayed slowed at all it's gone straight up there's no taper with regard to what the fed is going to do what they should have raised rates recently i had said i believed the fed would raise rates their last meeting last week uh i was wrong on that but i also said that had the fed not raised rates the market would fall which it did now the market is digesting what's going on realizing that the fed first is going to act the market wants action from the fed and the market's going to go much higher once the Fed does act. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of wrong information being put out here in the market. But this is what I'm talking about. I try to explain to people what's really going on, not the propaganda that they're getting from the mainstream outlets, which is all fake, the distractions, uh, the, 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 the fake. It's all just nonsense. I almost said a bad word. I don't know if I can say that. On video. Say whatever you want, man. Say whatever you want. What crap then? You know, I just don't want, you know, I want people to not be fist fed the dog shit. I want them to really understand what's going on and get themselves on the right side of it. It's not hard if once you have a basic understanding. And I think, and I explained this today in my video, I want to keep people out of the pitfalls and landmines that I've stepped on and into over the years, learning this stuff trying to you know wade through this market here um that's honestly what all i want I, I tell people all the time look you don't have to lose here i know people are afraid of the market and their fear is justified but again there's a lot of people um explaining oh the market's gonna crash every month after month and they've been wrong 100 percent of the time and i don't tell them people to buy and um you know the market is going to become very real at one point, but not yet, because you see, there's no guesswork here. People sit there and they speculate, oh, it's going to happen now, it's going to happen at this point, and they point to a, a date in the future or whatever. You can't do it. What, what people need to understand here, you want to really know the market? I'm going, to, I'm going to let everyone in on a big secret here. Stop looking at the stock market itself and look at the drivers. Understand that it's the debt market that is the main driver of the markets, the central banks fueling it all fueling the debt globally. And the stock market in aggregate is nothing but a derivative or it derives value from what's happening in the debt market. So what does that mean? The big one, the big meltdown is going to happen in the debt market. And right now, to me, looking at the 10-year yield, looking at the yield curve, looking at the relative strength of the dollar, I don't see a damn red flag anywhere. Okay. So what does that tell me? That this this fall in the market we've had recently is just a normal correction for which I've explained to people for months needed to happen. Last year, the S&P 500 put on more gains ever in, in history, Okay, more record highs in history. This is not normal for any asset to go straight up. Okay, There's got to be a corrective phase, which we are in now. This is not a crash. This is a corrective phase. And people who are smart enough to recognize that, and this is what I'm talking about again, will get in on in the market when it's on sale uh and i've told i've been telling people what to buy weeks i've been telling them to start nibbling at the nasdaq or the, the triple q's the tech sector i'm gonna tell them to, to wait for a pullback in the banks more specifically jp morgan goldman sachs bank of america all that's playing out telling people to buy crude oil when it hit 61 dollars a barrel we were at freaking 88 dollars I mean, look, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out, although people think you do. It's just a matter of paying attention to the drivers. That's all it is. It's not hard. And I could, as you can see, go on and on and on. So yeah, I think no, I and I, I'm going to let you, I'm gonna let you go on, man. I'm going to let you because you're, you're saying great stuff. Um, so what is – I have so many questions come to mind as I, as I hear you talk. I guess one question is – do you just see the market as, you know, it's constantly going through its cycles or are we entering a stage where we're, we're going into new territory where it's not going to necessarily repeat history, but be something completely different and transformational? Are we going to get to that point where the market really starts to just fundamentally change, maybe because of something like cryptocurrency? 
that's going to change the dynamics with regards to central bank, central bank money printing? Well, I, I look at things in, in, in different categories. All right. I, I think, I think the crypto space is phenomenal. I've been in it for a very long time. I love it. I think people that follow my work are well aware of that. I came out publicly um, saying to buy Bitcoin when it was around 3000, it's now at 38. When we were at 67 recently, whatever it was, very volatile space. People need to understand that. It's not for everyone. The crypto space is not for everyone. You have to have a pretty strong constitution to realize that it's extremely volatile. 50, 60% swings are, are the norm in any uh, a cryptocurrency here. And I, I usually, excuse me, uh, refer to Bitcoin because it's the mommy, you know, uh, it, what Bitcoin does kind of pulls the rest of the crypto market with it. Uh, I do believe, and I've been saying this for a very long time, what, what I, let me, let's, let's talk about cryptocurrencies a little bit here. Why does Greg Manorino even like cryptocurrencies? What is the draw for me? A lot of people have different takes on this, but my take, and the reason why I like cryptocurrencies because I own them. They're not issued by a central bank, nor are they owed back to a central bank uh, plus interest that they create out of thin air. I'm all about owning things, okay? You own these things. I'm also a big advocate of precious metals. I think people need to have physical gold, physical silver, my favorite asset of all time. I got it all over my desk, um, you know, in... in in their portfolio, it's a no-brainer. And having you units, having anti-debt units in your portfolio is critical. Anti-debt units, not things issued by central banks. No counterparty risk involving a central bank here. For example, we are right now in the largest Frankenstein monster a bubble in the history of the world. And I am not referring to the stock market, which is in a bubble. The stock market is only in a bubble because it's a derivative as to what's going on here in the debt market. The stock market derives value from the debt market. Like I said, forward guidance, PE ratios, and whatever thing else doesn't matter anymore. It's all about the easy money from the Fed, which is not going to stop despite the fact that they keep talking about rate hikes and now they're backpedaling. It's insane. But they will be raising rates. And I will say it again, uh, right here on your lovely show, that the market will respond in a positive way. The market wanted action. Uh, the last uh, FOMC meeting and, and it didn't get it. And that's why stocks fell. It was a no brainer to me. I told people that's exactly what would happen. And it did. You don't need to be again to uh, uh, practice witchcraft or anything to figure this stuff out. It's just a, you know, it's, it's just an easy equation. So in, in my view, you know, moving forward, what can we expect? We can expect central banks around the world to continue to inflate. They're not going to stop. I've, I've told people this for years and years. They're going to inflate, inflate, and then inflate some more. This is the driver of what's going on right now with regard to the market. Suppressed rates now going on since the last meltdown have robbed the middle class or anyone with an interest earning account blind. And all that wealth has been pushed into the stock market, making the well-off and the rich even richer than they are right now. Look, you want to look back on history um, at how people get wealthy or how they create wealth. It's by investing in things. And the stock market is more or less a random walk with an upward drift. Although, you know, from time to time we get these crashes and crashes are just really corrections. Um, in other words, getting out the, the distortions that exist in, in the markets. And that's why you get these precipitous falls here. But you see, the market right now is so distorted. No one knows where the bottom is. No one knows where the top is. What we do know is when the Federal Reserve here jumped in here with quantitative easing one, they did that at Dow 6,000. Were we going lower than that? Yeah, we probably were going lower than that. So there's no bottom. We don't know where the bottom is. The bottom could be 3,000. OK, I don't know, uh, but I, I still feel the, the, the easy money is not going to stop. The Fed's balance sheet is going to continue to balloon. That's going to drive the market until it doesn't. And what I mean by that is we are going to see a moment in time here. And it's a no brainer, again, where we're going to get a sell off, a big sell off in the debt market. And how you can watch this is by following the 10 year yield. Okay, the 10 year yield is sitting about 1.8 right now. We're going to end up in a situation here 
where um, the driver of the market, the debt market starts to sell off in a rapid way. And you're going to see rates spike in an uncontrolled fashion. We've seen a pretty big jump here in the 10-year yield since the Federal Reserve announced that they're going to be you know, raising rates here. That's the market just adjusting to the new dynamic. And what did that do? That set the NASDAQ and the tech stock, tech sector uh, down. Again, the tech sector, for people that don't understand, it's very rate sensitive. Okay, So when you get a spike here in the 10-year yield, generally you see the tech sector sell off. To me, that was a massive buying opportunity. I, and I told people, start nibbling at the Qs, uh, QQQ, which is uh, exchange trader fund tracks the NASDAQ. Anyway, um, so and, and also understanding that the market always overreacts to things to the upside and to the downside. You take advantage of these things as a market player. You know, don't don't hate the player. You hate the game. I know a lot of people hate the market. Yeah. But if you play the market right and if you respect it, it's going to be very good to you if you understand how it works. Now, going back to what I'm saying. You get a sell off here in the debt market, which is going to happen. It's going to be rapid and it's going to be uncontrolled. And it's not just Greg Manorino saying it. The, you know, I might have been one of the first guys to say it from years ago. But now you got you know billion dollar hedge fund managers talking about it. Actually, Federal, uh, Federal Reserve, uh, what's his name, Greenspan, uh, he had mentioned the same thing. Oh, we can expect this to happen at one point, and it will. So we get an implosion here in the debt market. And what's that going to do? Once rates spike, that's going to melt the stock market. You're going to see the stock market take a hit that people aren't going to believe. And we don't know where the bottom is, but that we do know that the market's going to overcorrect at one point. And I can tell you this, there's going to be a lot of opportunity to get in then too, because these companies have value. People might say, oh, the stock market's worthless. It's not true. Some of these companies here that have been around for a very long time have value. The people working there have value. So this, like I said, there's always opportunity to me. Now, with regard to... Um, you know, the whole spectrum of things, it's, it, it's really a balancing act, but you don't have to focus on too much. You really just got to look at the, again, the drivers of the market, understanding the debt market. And I have a neat little, little thing I created. It's called the MMRI, the Manorino Market Risk Indicator, which is free to anybody. It's right on my website, traderschoice.net. It basically is a measure of market risk looking at the debt market as a driver. It's been dead on accurate. It's not a crash predictor, but it will tell you where risk is in, in the market. See, that's my thing. I offer all this stuff to people for nothing. I want people to have access to this information because they're not going to get it from anywhere else. You couldn't pay someone for this stuff. It's really the truth. And you can't be taught this stuff either if you went to a business school. You know how many people write to me all oh, that, Greg, I went to business school. I never learned this stuff. Where did you pick it up? You pick it up by being in it. You know, the best way to learn something is to do it, is, you know, get involved. And, you know, the best way to learn is to, is, is to make mistakes, too. You make mistakes and you learn from them. And I'm trying to stop people from doing that. But I've become pr a pretty good uh, reader, I guess, or understander. Uh, I have a good grasp on the market. And, and like I said, I'm not right all the time, but no one is right all the time. I don't care if you're a mega Wall Street bank. Uh, well, they're all in involved in a scheme and it's a, a crime. Look at JP Morgan. They're rigging the metals market. Everyone knows who's doing it. You ask anyone who works on Wall Street, off Wall Street, and even the commodities exchange realizes that they're rigging the metals market. How many times has JP Morgan been caught red-handed over and over and over rigging the metals market? What happens? Slap on the hand. They get a fine. They get a fine. Nobody gets arrested ever. Won't happen. They're too powerful. Anyway. I, I get uh, it. I got to ask again and just um, crypto. So what like, what was your initial take on it when you discovered it? And where do well, you see it playing? What role do you see it playing? Do you see it being as disruptive as the maxis think it will be? Uh, you know, the Bitcoin maxis, uh, some people call me a Monero maxi and we can, we can get into that. Do yeah. you see it doing what the cypherpunks originally intended or wanted it to do in that it would... Uh, complete the power of, of you know the state uh, uh, um, and shut down the printing presses essentially uh, give power to the people and uh, affect the markets in that way do you do you see that potentially well, happen, or you don't look at crypto that way 
let's go way back. When I first was introduced to cryptocurrency, I didn't know what to make of it. As a matter of fact, I think my first reaction for a while was one of, I don't understand this. I don't want to understand this. And I don't like it because I don't understand it. That was my initial take on it. Look, like I said earlier, I'm 56 years old. I'm kind of an old school guy. Okay. And it took a while for me to come around to say, okay, hold on a minute. This is, these are things that you own. That's a pretty cool thing. You mean there's, they're not issued by a central bank? No. You mean they're not owned by the central bank and owed back to the central bank? No, they're not. Hmm. I like it. That's really what I had like an epiphany. Okay. And then I started, uh, I started making calls on, I started following uh, the flow of money into the crypto markets first. Um, you remember there was a time when Bitcoin, it surged up to like 18,000 and it had a big sell off. Mm -hmm. I was telling, I wasn't even involved in crypto at the time, nowhere near like I am now, but I said to people, dump it, dump Bitcoin. And I was laughed at and I was ridiculed. A lot of crypto websites were, were calling me out. And then all of a sudden they took a nosedive. And I heard back from a lot of these people. They're like, hey, Greg, well, how did you pull that off? How did you call that like that? And they, a lot of these people, some with some pretty good names, apologized to me. And it's only because I was following money. I was watching how it was it was playing out. It didn't make sense to me. And any asset that goes parabolic, you got to look for a pullback. Sometimes they can be extreme. Okay. Um, and, and, that, and then when it dropped, I was like, you know what? I think this is probably a good time to start getting into this stuff. And that's really what happened to me. And since that time, uh, I've acquired a bunch of them. I, my largest holding bar none is Bitcoin. Uh, I own a fair amount of it. I own a bunch of other ones as well. I'm always open to owning new ones as well, too. Um, anyway, so but with regard to here's here's the only downside. Do you think it will become a global reserve? Well, look, I, look, yeah, that's that's kind of where I want to lead to. But here's my take on this. And, and it's, just, it's an unfortunate thing. Wall Street got their ugly, disgusting hands on this stuff. Uh, and, you know, you have Bitcoin futures trading and stuff like that. And I I hate that. I really wish and I still do wish that Wall Street would have kept their ugly hands off of this stuff. Now, with regard to. The crypto space as a whole, if you look at its market cap, uh, it's grown substantially and it's actually taken a pretty big hit recently. But the entire market cap of, of cryptocurrencies uh, is maybe uh, like you look at, uh, I forget what the actual number is now. Do you know what the market cap is of cryptos? I don't know anymore. I haven't like been following. Tri one trillion? Between yeah, I think you're pretty <laughs> close. Two trillion? I could be wrong. Uh, yeah. I no, you're, you're pretty close. But we're looking at, if you look at the entire market cap of the crypto space, it's about equivalent to one major DAO component or one uh, member of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Okay. So with that said, there's not enough, there's not enough firepower behind it, at least yet, to do it. And the fact that like I said, Wall Street got their hands on this. It's very disturbing to me. I still see it as a something that really should be in your portfolio. And I think anyone that doesn't have it in their portfolio is going to miss out on it. I, I have said to people, and I've been telling people for a very long time, um, even when it was at 67,000, when referring to Bitcoin or something like that, I said it's going much higher. And I still believe that we had a pretty significant drop here. But this should be expected. Anyone that's in the crypto space and doesn't expect that there's going to be wild swings. And I've done this exact motion to people on my own blog. Then they, they don't belong there. Okay. It's not for everyone. And I'm not putting anyone down. It's just that you need to expect these things to happen if you want to be in that space. If you're looking for stability in an asset, you should be probably looking at, I don't know, a, a, a big Dow component company that doesn't have much fluctuation in its price action also, and, you know, to the upside and or the downside. And plus you capitalize on a dividend payment. So, but, so look, you know, looking at assets here, I don't, do I think that Bitcoin or a crypto is going to become a world reserve currency only if a central bank wants it to happen? I don't think people realize how powerful Central banks are none more so than the Fed. The Federal Reserve, but right now, there's nothing, there's not an institution in the world that comes close to the power of the Federal Reserve. Um, 
Number one, they have the world reserve currency. Number two, the petrol dollar. N number three, because of the petrol dollar, and most people don't even know what I'm about to say, even members of the military, they are mandated to protect the oil of OPEC nations. So what I am saying via the petrol dollar is the Federal Reserve has the full backing of the military brass. So it's, what, it, it's you, they're unstoppable. They're unstoppable and they're fulfilling a goal, an end game that has been in play for a very long time. So uh, uh, how about this how about this game theory, though, that, you know, uh, Bitcoin and Monero, which I think even does it in, in a more effective way, is uh, essentially going to diffuse power away from the state, away from the Fed. So they're going to they, uh, yeah. as they tr uh, the more they try to, to stop it, the, the larger it grows, uh, it be, you know, they begin to lose potentially some some revenue off of uh, printing money or lots of revenue off the ability yeah, to print like money. I said we're going to be opting market. into crypto instead uh, it's not big enough there's not enough there's not enough firepower there's not even not even close not even there's not, not even close look but, at the but, entire but, market cap you to move away from fiat into uh, oh i wish people would oh my god you i mean that would be that would be the revolution this is why i've been telling people you know, you got to own this stuff here. Look, people are retarded. Okay. I say this word all the time. They are very reluctant to try something different. They like to go out there. They want to work and work for those fiat bills that are evaporating. The purchasing, the purchasing power is just dying. Okay. By design. I think we all know that here. Uh, they don't want to go out there and maybe put some money to work in a cryptocurrency or maybe even use it as a mode of transaction. Me, I would gladly, I have a car for sale right now. It's up on eBay, a 1968 Camaro SS Big Block. And uh, I told people, you want to pay me in Bitcoin or crypto? I'm all for it. You want to pay me in gold or silver? I'm all for that too. You want to pay me in stock? I'll, I'll trade. I'm all for that. But okay. people, they're so screwed up. They don't, look, Absolutely. Yes, if more people would adopt this, and it would have to be pretty damn big, we would have to see the market cap of cryptos go into the many, many trillions, and probably in the quadrillions. Because if see, here's the here's the thing that people forget about: when you're looking at the value of a particular fiat currency, now there is also layers and layers and layers of derivatives underneath that. So. No one even knows the absolute market cap of any particular fiat currency. Let's look at the dollar. There are dollar derivatives, layers of them. It's in the quadrillions, way beyond what we're seeing at face value. So for, for, the, for cryptocurrency to become a real threat, it would need to be, you would need to say mass adoption. Which, who knows, maybe it could happen in the future. But we need people to change their mentality. The fact of the matter is people are too dumb. And, and I say this all the time. There are a select few, people like yourself, I'm sure people that follow your, your work, who are able to see a little further down the road than the next guy. And that's huge, okay? Realizing the value of things, recognizing opportunity. Most people can't see it. They have no idea. So I talk to people all the time about, hey, you know what? Maybe you should... The, put some money to work in, let's say, a cryptocurrency. Okay. Now, nah, why do I want to do that? Well, have you seen its value? Yeah, I've seen it, but it fell a lot. We were at 65000 and now we're at 38000 So, So they're, they're, they're afraid. And then you've got all these regulatory bodies coming out. You've got moron um, freaking uh, representatives. Oh, oh, we're going to start regulating cryptocurrency. We've got a retard president. Pardon my pun. I don't like the guy. I think most people know that already. Oh, we're going to executive action here. We are going to take executive action against cryptocurrencies, really. But they won't take executive action against public enemy number one, which is the Federal Freaking Reserve. No, they can't because they are the government. It's insane. I wish people that were listening to your blog, my blog, would start to adopt and, and own more cryptocurrencies, grow the market capitalization of the space exponentially. But it doesn't seem, I mean, it has grown. But it's really, it, I, I don't know. It's, I, I've, I, you know, I'm, I'm all Monero. I've been all Monero for, for quite some time. I'm, 
you know, if this is going to work out, I'm one of the early adopters. I'm a believer. And I think more people are going to follow me and others into this. I hope they do. I want people to. This Monerotopia, you know, and the only thing stopping it is people choosing not to opt into it because they're getting. That's it. They're getting. How do we we change that? If uh, by doing. By doing exactly, I mean, you have 200,000 subscribers. You're doing more than you imagine, man. You're doing a tremendous amount of work. I, I got a lot of people getting, getting the word out, especially me. Right. I, the people that follow me are already, you know, indoctrinated into, they're already believers. Uh, I imagine uh, your group is bigger, 200,000. You have people that are on the fringe and you're bringing them in. So we do it by exactly what you're doing You just continue yeah. to tell the story and the information. Make a spread. difference, man. That's what we got to do. And that's what I, that's why I do what I do. I don't give a shit. Let me let everyone in on a big, big fat secret here. I don't give a shit about the money. Okay. I want to make a difference. I want people to understand what's going on and I want people to make a change. I want the world to change. I wish we could get here. Look, you see, and the fed, I, George Gammon gave me that. I love George Gammon. You know, we, this this organization's got to go, but we need a revolution, and you know maybe not an armed revolution, but we need one. And if we could do that by people circumventing the freaking debt based economic model, see, people don't even know about that. People don't realize that at its core, the system we have is debt based. Meaning, in order for it to function, the central banks must issue more debt exponentially just to maintain where we are. The moment we stop this thing, well, what would, what would happen, for example, if we stopped, if we had some way to stop the Federal Reserve, public enemy number one, from issuing a single dollar, one of, of their, their product, they have one product, it's debt, and they keep issuing it. If we were able to do that, one dollar, the Federal Reserve implodes, they're done, and it's over. This is why you see what we're seeing around the world, reasons f- to create cash out of thin air, create fear, point that a particular situation here, this whole issue with Russia and the Ukraine, you know what this really is? It's an arms deal in disguise. And the Russians, they're going to benefit from it. The United States, we're going to benefit from it too. Our government, or they're going to be bought. Where's all this cash coming from? In the last few weeks, we've sent hundreds of millions of dollars in weaponry over to the Ukraine. This is just a small fraction of what's coming. It's all about creating reasons to borrow from the future. And as we are seeing, inflation is skyrocketing. It it has to balance out here. Every dollar that is created out of thin air, it magically added to the system. Where does it get its value from? Does anyone ever think about that? Probably not. But I'm going to let everybody in on a little secret too. Every dollar that's printed or magically added to a digital screen, in order for it to have any purchasing power at all, it has to steal value from every other existing bill, whether it's printed or whether it's digital. That's how it gets its value. And that's why we've seen 98% of the value of the dollar dissolve as the Federal Reserve continues to print. And again, they're not going to stop. So realizing that, what should we do? Yeah, we should be getting into cryptocurrencies. And absolutely. You should be holding hard assets, physical gold and silver. I still feel like silver is the most undervalued asset in the world based on looking at the Dow gold ratio, gold, silver. There's so many ways to look at this. But the bottom line is, yeah, we do need a revolution. And I wish we could do it. And if you look, if you and I could come up with a way to get more people to adopt, you know, getting out of their system and into something else, something I've been telling people freaking day after freaking day, I'm all for it. Because this thing, this institution has got to go. This is the, the, the largest crime syndicate the world has ever seen. There's nothing that even comes close. And our, our president wants to regulate cryptos. Oh, yeah, but he doesn't want to do anything about the Fed. <laughs> Talking about how inflation is a positive thing. Are you kidding me? I, the Federal I, Reserve has, oh, you heard him. You heard him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm an optimist, man. I mean, I, I think things are completely, they're throwing a softball out there and just going to be hit out of the park. I mean, you, you're, you're a little older than I am. You've been watching this for a while. I got to imagine you're more hopeful than ever that people are finally waking up to this. I mean, just look at well, some people are. This, we- this as, an, as an option. People are opting into it. At the same time, we're reaching a, a fever pitch with regards to how much money printing they're doing. And it's like it's nice. the perfect much storm. 
You think much worse? So do you think there'll be a catalyst that will then push people over where they'll be, you know, they'll open their eyes to this and be like, oh my God, they've been stealing from us this whole time. Let's just all go buy crypto. I wish that would happen. I, people are always late to the game. You know what's going to be? It's going to be the people like yourself. It's going to be people like me and other people who follow your work and my work that are going to be the ones that are going to benefit from this because there is there is something else going on. There's so many things that are in play here. What we're seeing, number one, is people being forced to suffer, being forced to endure surging inflation here. And they're not ta- people they're not taking to the streets. They're not banging on the door of their representative to do something about it. They're, it's the boiling frog syndrome, okay? They act too late. It's always the same story. It, it, it will never change. There's a natural selection going on, and I've been saying this for the longest time here. There are people who can see and people who can't see. No matter what you show them, you could you could show them anything and they, they won't believe it. Or if you even tell them something is true or threaten their belief system, no matter what be, then they lash out at you. Even if they're showing the truth, they just can't buy it. Now, what I see happening here, uh, for those of us that are wise enough and smart enough to be outside of the debt-based system, um, by holding cryptocurrencies, by holding metals, is look, this money just moves from one reality into another. That's all it does. Okay. I watch the flow of money through the markets. That's all I do. Okay. And that has allowed me and the people that follow my work to stay ahead of the curve. Now, understanding that right now the environment is easy money, pumping into inflating the debt bubble, inflating the stock market bubble. This is called a risk on environment cash flowing into the stock market. This risk on will turn risk off. Markets run in cycles. Assets more or less run in predictable patterns and cycles. If you look at their long-term trends now, cryptocurrencies are too new. So they don't have a long enough track record. But if you look at any, it's going to happen. I mean, the longer that it's out there, you're going to see predictable patterns develop here. Uh, There's something else called fractals. Um, I don't know if people are familiar with this. Anyway, I'm not going to go off on a tangent with that. But you, you can study the, the the movement of money in, a, in in fractions, basically, and see that this is a repetitive pattern. And they also play out to be a larger pattern, but they're always the same or damn close to being the same. So understanding that the market now is a risk on thing, meaning cash is still flowing into the market because of the debt bubble. There's going to be a moment again when we get this implosion. The debt market is going to implode and all cash is going to do is move from one reality into another reality. In my professional opinion, how it's going to work is very simple. You're going to see cash bleed out of the the debt market in a big way. That's going to put a lot of pressure on the stock market. And where's that cash going to go? Is it going to go to money heaven? No, cash never goes to money heaven. It goes from one reality into another reality. And in my view, it's going to go into precious metals, it's going to go into commodities in aggregate, and it's going to go into cryptocurrencies, which are going to hit highs that people aren't going to believe. That's how it's going to work. And those of us out here who are smart enough to realize that are going to be the beneficiaries of it. Now, I don't think about when this is going to happen. I really don't. I don't even care. I just know it is going to happen. So again, what do I do? I I trade the market I have. I invest for the future, which means holding cryptos, holding gold and silver, anti-debt units, uh, and then paying attention to the market as a whole. That's it. It's not hard to see what's going to happen if you realize how money flows through markets and through assets. Make sense? Yeah, definitely makes sense. So th- there's a saying in Monero land that, uh, you know, all roads lead to Monero, um, right? So uh, what you're describing is people waking up and having the realization, seeing that, you uh, you know, crypto is the thing to buy. A lot of people can't understand it, but those that do move into yeah. it, they see kind because of the they've been indoctrinated. They see it's so the that's going on, and they and they move yeah. into crypto. Uh, but then there's those that are in crypto, and they 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 discover Monero, and they see it as kind of being the truest form, and that it's completely untraceable, uh, untrackable. Yeah. It's fungible. Do you have any opinion there? Have you looked at Monero closely? Do you? I haven't actually looked at it. Uh, in any in depth, I've, I I don't own it. I'm being honest. I don't own it right now. I own a bunch of them, and uh, I bought some of them like on a whim here and there. Um, you know, I'm not saying I wouldn't invest in it. I would look into it. 
believe me, I would probably be a big advocate of it as well. Uh, just from what you're explaining to me, I just, I just like the space. I really, really do. Um, but look, I think the people have got to overcome their fear and people are being made to be afraid. And that's a shame because once they become afraid of something, they, they tend to look at me, for example, I'm not saying I was afraid of crypto when I first heard it, but I didn't know what to make of it. So I immediately said, nah, not really for me until I started thinking that's, and maybe we'll get more people to do that. I really hope we do because this system, the debt-based system is, it's perverted. It's just, it's hurting everybody. And I hate that. I don't think people need to lose. I think we can all win if we just understand what we should be doing here. And, 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 you know, going back to, you know, with, with cryptocurrencies here and everything else, I am not a one trick pony. I think people should be somewhat diversified um, and have be spread out to a certain degree, take advantage of everything you can around you. I mean, we've been in the biggest bull run the world has ever seen. People have been told to stay out of the market by so-called stock market experts. Uh, who have allowed their followers, some with channels much bigger than mine, to lose, for to lose for, for years. Uh, really? What stock market expert couldn't see how this market was going to just surge higher over the past several years, especially? You got to be, I, I wouldn't consider you an expert because you've been 100% wrong. Um, <laughs> But, but anyway, I just want to I just want to chime in because I want to give the, I want to give the the people what they want. You know, it's a Monero talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would love to. You know, I think a lot of people think uh, you're you know you're a really sharp guy and you, you have good insights. And it sounds like you don't know Monero too well, which is fine. But I want to you know maybe explain it a little bit to you and just get your kind of reaction. So yeah. what Monero is trying to be digital cash, right? That's what it's focused on. It's trying to do that one thing very well, uh, and it's 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 Basically, when you use it, it's the equivalent of using cash, but you can use it on the internet and you can pass it peer to peer. And every mm -hmm. unit equals every other that unit. That's very appealing. <laughs> it, it, it's fungible, right? So it focuses on being private uh, and untraceable. So there's no transaction history with Monero as opposed to Bitcoin, where it's on a completely transparent ledger. You can see all the transactions. Uh, people in Monero think that's an issue, and that's why Monero was invented so to be more cash-like, right? So if I if I give you a duffel bag of a million dollars in cash, uh, there's no question you don't you know there's no history attached to that. It's just you know uh, you assume that it can just be used as a hundred dollars. Whereas if you receive a Bitcoin, it comes with a, a history attached to it. Not every Bitcoin equals other Bitcoin, and that's the problem that Monero is trying to solve. It's trying to be fungible digital cash or digital gold. What's your take on that in terms of- uh, that's beautiful. That, that, that's that's not beautiful that's to me. I, I, I love it. I mean, again, these are things that are not- Anything to me that can circumvent the current debt-based system, I'm all for it. I just think the system is right now is designed to, to destroy people. And again, those people who have the ability to see- an opportunity like you're explaining to me right now. Well, good for them. I, 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 I'm, I'm more for it myself. I want more people to open their eyes. I really do, and I, hopefully they will. I look, like I said, it seems that more people are understanding that the system that they've been issued uh, and told to participate in, it, there's something very, very wrong with it. So maybe we will see, and I think we will for sure see more people you know, circumventing the current system in any way they can, whether it's through Monero or some other avenue. Um, that's, that's, that I do believe is going to happen, but, it, but people are just in aggregate for the most part. I'd be willing to bet that you talk to you, me, people who follow your work and you're out there explaining this stuff to people. They, first of all, they probably can't hear you because they, 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 they block this stuff. They're so tied up in their day-to-day -day routines. They got their kids, they got their house, they got their mortgage, they got their car payment, they got to do this, that, and the other thing. And that's all by design too. People are so wound up in trying to maintain, oh, I got to do this and oh, I have to do that. When I try to talk to people for the most part about a lot of the stuff we've, we've uh, covered here, even the markets themselves, which are pretty simple to me, it's just like it goes in one ear and not the other. They don't hear it. They, they're they incapable of it. And I hate that. So what we do, 
I think, to make something like this grow is we try to connect with those people that understand. You know what I mean? Because there are people who can think outside the box. And that's the main thing. People can't do that. They're so indoctrinated that it's in, they're incapable of thinking outside the box. And that has stifled their growth, these individuals' growth. And they're, they're never going to be able to move forward or, or make a big change. But like I said, you know, we need to see how this is going to play out. And I would love to see something like, let's say, Monero or, or something along those lines that performs like that you know, get really, really big. But the fact of the matter is we're in an environment of control, control to an extreme. Um, you know, you have, you can't do this. You can't do, there's no freedom anymore. Uh, you, we don't even own our own bodies anymore. It's all about control, the environment. And that's the only real worry I have is the powers that be central banks. If they honestly felt, and there isn't a threat right now, that cryptocurrencies were a threat to the system, they'd shut it down. They'd find a way to do it. How would they do um, it? So I, that, that's, that's, so I got, I got to just say, that's the other thing that Monero is very focused on. So it's focused yeah. on being digital cash. And, and part of that isn't just being a, a fungible um, currency, but it's being one that can't be shut down. Uh, and it does well, that. I, you see, I don't, that, uh, no, yeah. I don't believe that. I would believe, I think that the powers that be, Pentagon, their think tanks, whatever, they're watching all this stuff. And believe me, they're going to have hackers, whatever they got to do, find a way in. There's nothing, nothing. I you cannot convince me otherwise. That is infallible. Everything has an well, Achilles it, heel. It's, it's encryption. So the, the whole concept. I, I mean, they'll find a way around it. Those, to look, those those this is not. Stay ahead of those that decrypt, you know, so it's, it comes down to kind of a basic physics. Basic. Uh, no, I understand that. But there's nothing to me, nothing in history ever. That's been infallible. You get this, this, this country develops this type of a weapon that can't be defeated. Well, then guess what? They find out it can be. You know, there's nothing that cannot be defeated. Uh, and I, I don't want that's something that you or anyone else can never convince me of that there it's something is absolute in an absolute meaning it cannot be corrupted or or circumvented in some kind of way. It can't it. I would have to see it to believe it. And I, in my studies in life with regard to medicine and everything else, it, it's nothing's infallible, nothing at all. I mean, I think there's maybe a lesser risk, but at the same time, but you have to understand that with every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that's a, that's a law. And you will, I guarantee you that there are, if there is anything out there that is, has the possibility of being infallible, uh, there's someone out there trying to circumvent it. Whether they will or not, I don't know. But if, if someone it, tries hard enough at anything, they will become successful. Let me get your insight on, like, give, let me get your insight on this. I'm not going to try to convince you of that fact, although I could I could talk about that in a long time. Um, but Name Monero, one thing ever in history, one that has been infallible. Uh, you know, you break, think Monero break, break, is the break, only break, thing you know, going faster than the speed of light. We we you know it's, that's what, there, there's law. It's not infallible. The speed of light is I mean, laws, that, no, that's they, not true. laws of nature, and that and that's what Bitcoin Monero is banking on. It's banking on this idea that uh, exactly. But like I said, look, nobody watching can, can tell can. me one thing that's been infallible since his, since the, ever is nothing. So well, I wouldn't the, be pushing man-made. Sure, things that are man-made, but 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 math has been so infallible. So Monero is not man-made. Who made it? God. No, it is man-made. Okay, it's man-made. So guess what? It's, it's not. If man is in, is not infallible, it's infallible too. Look, I don't even want to sure. carry on that. No, no I'm not going to say it. It's not infallible, but it's 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 closer than we've gotten before in terms of creating something. Beautiful, but so if that's the case. Then you know. And I think there are ways to corrupt it more so, like socially and and using game theory to attack it, but not so much corrupting the the actual technology. But what I want to ask you, yeah, to get some insight. So sure. what Monero is trying to do is trying to be the the project, the open source crypto that is the most resistant to being co-opted by governments. It also happens to be the one that's most attracted by governments in terms of the one they want to stomp out, but it's trying to be the one that they can't kill the most. Um, do you think that is makes it an interesting potential investment if it can hold up to that that? that value proposition? Oh, absolutely. I, I would, I'll probably, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I'll probably go buy some myself after this show. 
I would love to own own more of this stuff here. I'm always looking for opportunities to put, put cash to work. And then at the same time, look, you know, look, just be cautious in, in life and anything. And like I said, just be aware of what's going on and what potentially you see. You always have to look. You always have to have the high ground in life. No matter what it is, whether you're investing in Monero, you're investing in something, or whether you're just living your life, you always have to have that high ground. You got to think about what are the possibilities of what can go wrong. What can possibly go wrong? Because whatever you think, even as abstract as it may be, is possible. So I'm not trying to tell people not to buy this. I think people should be investing. No, in I'm just trying to get your insights, man. It's yeah. Like, so, yeah, look, like I said earlier, I don't you, know the way, another way to put it. I'm all you, for it. You, Anything that. Yeah. You live in New York, like New York area? I did. This 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 here? This okay. Is, this, is, this is Vegas, actually. I live in Vegas. Are you in Vegas? Okay. Because I, I'm interested in that car, man. Is, is it in good condition? You're looking to sell it for crypto? I'll sell it for... Yeah, of course I would sell it for crypto. It's uh, it's on eBay right now. It's a 68 Sell it for Monero? Peer, peer to peer? It's... it's, it's uh, yes. You want to pay me a Monero? I'll take it. It's, in, it's a Camaro? 68 Camaro SS. Big block car. Yeah, go look at it. It's, um, it's yeah. Send me, uh, send me the link after. Uh, I'm, okay. in, I'm interested. Are, are you trying to get a crypto person in particular to buy it or whatever? That's just you're just all uh, accepting. It doesn't have to be crypto. I'll accept anything. You know, whatever people want to give me uh, is fine. Like I said, I don't have to have. Cash. It for? How, what, what, how much uh, are you selling the car for? Approximately. I got to buy it now. Price at sixty grand. Oh, wow. so, uh, I'm not a big yeah. car guy, but that sounds like uh, you it's know. it's a fair price for the car. It's it's a real super sport. It's done up. I did the motor myself. I'm a big car guy. It's it's pretty outrageous vehicle. But wait to see what I got coming. That's why I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> is it blue? What color is it? It's it's butternut yellow with a black stripe, black interior. It's oh, a right. beautiful car, it really. Is I I I'd be sad to see it go. It's got it's got a nitrous oxide system in it. It's it's pretty badass. It really is. Yeah. I'm going to check that out, man. Yeah. Anyway, just real quick. I got to kind of get out of here like now. So, yeah. but we can totally do this. Another, I would love, honestly, and I'm being straightforward with you. I want to do this again. I'm going to learn more about Monero and we're going to talk more about it. You and me. I, Can I come on your show? It'd be more per, in terms of getting the word out. I mean, you have like, I don't know. Subscribers. I've never had a guest on. I don't know how to do that. The whole I think thing. It would be if, good, man. It would be good because I well, mean, what we could do. I think ahead. what we could do. If you want to record something together, mm -hmm. and then I can share it or I can post it on my blog. As a matter of fact, oh, is there a link to this when this is over? Yeah, I'll give you the link. One hundred percent. I'll. I will blast this out to a, a lot of people, so this will get some some traction, and I want awesome. people to hear this stuff. Look, I want people to gather information. And I want them to make up their own minds. I don't want to convince anybody of anything ever. And I want people to, whatever I say, I don't want them to, to believe a word of it. Well, I want them to research it for themselves and say, hey, you know what? What this guy said is true or it's not true. Or some people just can't make up their minds. There's, things aren't always just black and white. There's always this, this middle ground here. And, if, and I tell people all the time, if I'm not connecting with you, well, then that's okay. It's, we we can still be friends. Just means that we're not on the same wavelength. You, you know what I, you know what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So this is a great message. I love I loved being on your show. I don't do many shows anymore. In fact, I hardly ever do interviews anymore. I um, appreciate this, man. Yeah, I, no, it's all right. I enjoy, I, I I enjoy our it. time together. I enjoy uh, just you know. I, you have a what I love is we've a, never done a show fun, before. Positive personality, man. I, I I like I like your attitude. I like your attitude too. Look, we're going to get through this. I want people to just circumvent the system and realize what's going on. That's really the truth. But anyway, I really do got to go. Right, one, thing, one, thing, on one, one, one thing at you. One thing at you. Do you ever stream live? So like you're- You still you're, haven't done it in a long time. Because we, we do a live stream. Maybe you want to jump on that. You tweet it out to your people and they could come in and talk. You know, yeah. the, we'll let them come in and they could talk live too, just to interact. You know, we'll them. talk about that in the future. Maybe we'll, we will get something going. But right. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Send me that send me that link to your car. I will. Thanks a lot. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 
And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.